we are now going to discuss how to write the algorithm or how to write the algorithmic logic to find out if a given input year is a leap year or not so if you take a look at all these years only the year 2000 and the year 2020 is a leap year the year 2100 and the year 1700 are not leap years you may be kind of surprised because the common assumption is any year which is divisible by 4 or if you divide by 4 and if there is no remainder that is considered to be a leap year but that is incorrect logic the theory behind a leap year is like this every year we have about roughly 6 hours extra but it is not exactly 6 hours it is slightly less than 6 hours so what happens is at the end of 4 years we add one extra day in February treating that as a leap year. But if you remember my words carefully what I told you is we are not exactly having extra 6 hours per year. It is slightly lesser than 6 hours. So what we are doing is we are actually doing an approximation by adding one day after 4 years. So in order to correct this particular mistake what we do is we don't treat every century year as a leap year. Only if the century year is divisible by 400, then we treat it as a leap year. So these years are not divisible by 400. That means if you take 2100 and divide by 400, the remainder is going to be 100. Whereas if you divide 2000 by 400, the remainder is going to be zero. That's why years like these chaps are not leap years. To get you a better idea of leap year concept and the theory behind it, I will put in the description section of this particular video links to more information just to satisfy your curiosity because our job is to determine if an input year is a leap year or not and not get too much involved in trying to figure out the theory behind the leap year. Okay, Although it's an interesting thing, I would suggest you go ahead and look at it. So if I have to find if an input year is a leap year, I'll need a variable called as year. Then I will need to read the year from the user. The user is going to enter the year from the keyboard. Now the sequence of steps in this algorithm is very important. First thing what I need to do is if an year is given I need to check whether it is divisible by 400. If a year is divisible by 400 I can straight away say that the input year is a leap year. So what I do here is I do this step here. If year mod 400 is equal to 0, that means what I am doing is, I am doing something like this. Suppose the year is 2000, I am dividing it by 400. Okay, so now if you see, the remainder happens to be 0 because the mod operation gives me 0. So for a year like 2000, this condition will be true and I am going to say year is a leap year. This takes care of things like this one. But now I need to eliminate century years like 2100 and 1700 because if I don't eliminate them and if I try to check divisibility by 4 it will show both as these as leap years when they are not actually leap years. So what I am doing here is next step I am coming with an else if condition. In this else if what I am doing here is if year mod 100 is equal to 0 that means years like 2100 1700 will be divisible by 100 the remainder is being going to be 0 then I am going to say right not a leap year this is an if this is a else if so you need to understand if this executes this will never execute if this is false then it will come here and try to check this one now I am left with only non-century years. I am left with years like this chap. So what I am going to do here is very simple. I am going to ask the question is year mod 400 equal to 0? If year mod 400 is so, sorry yeah is year mod 4 is equal to 0 then I am going to say write a leap year. So 2020 divided by 4 the remainder is going to be 0 so I am straight away going to say leap year. And last any other year like 2019 it should say not a leap year so last step is going to say 2019 a year like 2019 is not a leap year so in order to understand the working of this flow chart sorry an algorithm better okay let's try to run through a few sets of data 
So let's take the year 1700. Year is 1700. 1700 mod 400 equal to 0? No, the remainder is 100. So this condition is false. It will come to this else if. In the else if 1700 mod 100, 1700 is divisible by 100, remainder is 0. It is going to print not a leap here and then come and stop. You need to understand in the if, else if, else if and else. If one of these condition is true, it will not execute the other statements at all. It will only execute the statement which is true or by default the last statement as else. Let's take the year 2000 now. Quite simple. Read the year. Year is 2000. 2000 mod 400 I had already shown you the remainder is 0. So I am going to say year is a leap year. After that come to this bracket and come here and stop. Let's take one more year 2024. 2024 mod 400 is equal to 0? No, remainder is 24. So this condition is no or false. 2024 mod 100 is the remainder 0? No, remainder happens to be 24. So this condition is also false. Now when I come here, 2024 mod 4, the remainder is definitely going to be 0. So it's going to say write a leap here and then come here and stop. Then you can take one more example like 2021. 2021 mod 400, the remainder is 21. So it's not going to get into this box. 2021 mod 100, remainder is again 21. So again, it does not get into this particular right. Now 2021 mod 4, remainder is again 1. So it is not equal to 0. So it will come here and it will say not a leap year. So I hope this clarifies your understanding of what is a leap year and do not assume that every year which is divisible by 4 is a leap year. It has to be following the set of rules which are given in this statements. Most important, the order of this is very important. Suppose I make year mod 400, if I put this fellow here, okay, you can see what will happen. Suppose this was the first statement. Then what would have happened here is with this statement, year like 2000 would have shown as not a leap year. So the sequence is pretty important or in fact very important when you are doing the leap year logic. When you are writing the program, okay, I'll show you when you are writing the program for this, it's just going to be a two line problem or a two line code because we can combine a lot of this into a single statement. It's much much easier writing in program but it is very important to understand the logic when we are doing it as an algorithm. I hope this clarifies your understanding of this particular process.